All right, we're going to head to the main thing now. And calls for free college tuition certainly have an economic impact, but they could also impact our national security. Former U.S. Marine Kate Monroe talked to Madison Seals about how those free tuition policies and outdated GI Bill benefits are contributing to our military crisis in America and how we can best support our service members. That's today's main thing. A couple of weeks ago, we covered a report about the decline in U.S. military readiness called the Index of Military Strength. Kate, your recent op-ed addresses some of the reasons behind this decline, including lower recruitment numbers, taking us into 2024 with the smallest active duty force in more than 80 years. Why are fewer young and capable men and women enlisting in the U.S. military? Well, there's a lot of factors that play into this. You know, 82% of most people that serve, serve generationally right? Mm -hmm. But in the last couple of cycles of generations of people that have served, there has been some things that have happened during their parent service, right? In these last couple of generations during their parent service. And once they have become veterans that when they tell those stories to their kids, it, it doesn't paint a good picture for their children. For example, the instance at which people are assaulted in the military, roughly 70% of people get assaulted. So if you have a whole generation of people that were assaulted, especially in certain services, they're going to tell their kids that they're not safe in that particular service. One. Yeah. Two, the adversarial process of the VA, once you become a veteran, is so difficult that those parents and all these other generational wars are talking to their kids saying, you're going to go serve and the promise the country makes to you isn't going to be upheld. Then there's just an overall um, wokeism that has crept into every single service, except for the Marine Corps. <laughs> the Marine Corps has done the best job, I think, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a Marine Corps veteran. They've done the best job at holding together their esprit de corps, right? They, they have kept the Marine Corps hard. It's still difficult to get into. Not everyone qualifies, but the other services have gone very woke. And there's like that saying, you know, you go woke, you go broke. Well, in the military, you, you go woke, you have a massive recruiting crisis. That's what happens. And then the last thing, something that happened, you know, recently during this administration, they've been making a massive push to make college free for everyone. Well, a lot of kids that were going into every other service except for the Marine Corps, you don't go into the Marines for college. You go in to be a Marine. Well, a lot of the other services rely on kids wanting to get that GI Bill. So if college is free now... Couple that with, you know, generational failure once people become veterans, um, the assaults in the military, all the wokeism, the lack of patriotism that we are seeing, and now college is free. You put that in a bucket, shake it around. Now you have a massive recruiting crisis, and making college free is just going to be a massive detriment to future recruiting. I, I am totally against um, us doing this as a nation. Uh, people need to take responsibility for their debt. This is just another way that this administration has failed the American people. And as you mentioned, you're a former U.S. Marine yourself, so you can speak to how important incentives can be in recruiting young adults. And that makes perfect sense that veterans who have honorably served are rewarded with benefits like free college under the GI Bill. But when benefits are extended to the entire population, regardless of service, sacrifice or effort, then those things can no longer be considered benefits. And you mentioned in your article that minus the Marine Corps and the Space Force, every other branch missed their recruiting goals in the past fiscal year. What types of careers or jobs are these young adults pursuing instead? Well, there's a lot of different things. I mean, I think a lot of the kids who would have come from the center of the country, you know, places like Texas and, you know, the Carolinas, a lot of those kids are picking up trades. So a lot of their parents got out of the service and picked up trades as a profession. So you're seeing a lot of them going toward trade vocations. And that's good. I mean, the country does need more tradesmen, but we still need them to go serve in the military first. So I think that that's one thing. Then the others that are not going to be tradesmen, a lot of them want to be business owners. There's a big entrepreneurial push. Um, they do, you know, we've done a, a good job telling kids, you know, that you can own your own business. So they all think they should be a CEO today, which is why I actually crafted the framework of the Veteran Entrepreneur Act, because this next generation, if college is free, then what is left? You know, what is the reward then? Well, if they can use their college to their college funds to start a business, that could be a good carrot. That, that's an interesting incentive that we've never offered um, as a nation. 
the legislation has already been introduced. We went to the effort of getting bipartisan, bicameral support. I, I highly doubt it won't pass because we are entering into a very unsafe season uh, as a nation if we don't shore up our position on recruiting. I mean, there's a lot of other things other than the Venture to Entrepreneur Act that could help us with recruiting. If you have time to talk about that, there's a lot of solutions, but we need to be firing every arrow in the quiver right now to get our military strength up immediately especially since we're facing all these potential wars around the globe. Yeah, absolutely. And and we can talk about that. As someone who was also in the military yourself, what do you think are some of the steps that our military and our policymakers should take in promoting the military as a viable option for young adults still? Well, first, before I answer the question, I would like to tell anybody who is a parent of a, a kid who is, you know, high school age thinking of joining or anyone who's listening of thinking of going in the service. Let's not forget that once you serve in the military, it changes your life's end destination. So if a lot of people have said to me, hey, Kate, even though you're a 100% disabled Marine Corps vet and a lot of very hard things happen to you, would you still do it again? And I could tell you 100% I would because the real value of having served other than you're being a blessing to your nation is you will have unmatched resiliency, your ability to adapt and overcome. Nothing will seem as hard ever again. So, you know, you want to go write a book, it'll be easy compared to having been in the service. You just will have a whole skill set and a step above your peers. Because when I go to um, a job, I go to speak and I am able to tell people I served in the Marine Corps, it cuts me apart from everyone else who's on stage with me. Like I'm running for Congress, I'm the only veteran running. I'm the only Marine Corps veteran. So it's it, it puts a spotlight on on me and sets me apart as something of more value. So there's more value than just free this, free that. It really sets up your life for success. Many um, CEOs of companies are veterans. So it, it is a good thing for your life. So how do we solve? <laughs> how do we solve the recruiting crisis? We need to immediately abandon all wokeism in the military immediately. Not only is it not a good recruiting tool, it puts our military men and women at risk. They, they used to talk about the thing was we don't want you know women to serve in combat. Well, now we're trying to get people to come into the military so they can have like trans surgeries. We, mm-hmm. We've gone far and away from the old, you know, days of the military where it, it, it's not everybody's game. Not everybody gets a trophy. You don't all get to go in and we need to get back to that immediately. One, two, if we could pass the veteran entrepreneur act, there'd at least be something interesting for kids to go in Four, three, we need to stop treating our veterans like they're disposable. We need to stop making it so difficult for our nation's veterans. We need to stop deprioritizing them behind migrants immediately. The the slap in the face that has gone on in the last couple of years during this administration to veterans has been unmatched by any other generation other than those coming back from Vietnam, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, not valuing our our service members while they're in service or once they are out of service, our veterans as well. So This is all great insight and a great reminder that military service is an honorable path. Kate, thank you so much for your service and your work to ensure that our service members and our country remain safe. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much.